And the Rangers discovered that Artemi Panarin's interest in them was real today when they signed him to a seven-year contract. Here are Panarin's numbers last year in Columbus. 28 goals, 59 assists, and he averaged almost 20 minutes a game on a Columbus team that upset the best team in the regular season, the Tampa Bay Lightning, by sweeping them in four, and Panarin was a leader of that group. And we're happy to be joined now by the no doubt beaming president of the New York Rangers, John Davidson, after a very successful and happy day for him and the Rangers organization. J.D., thanks so much for joining us. Uh, first off, compare your thought process and your emotions at maybe this time yesterday to the point where you've realized that Artemi Panarin indeed was going to sign with the Rangers. You know what, guys? I can actually back it up to running the Columbus Blue Jackets like I was and understanding that... Uh, that uh, Artem wanted to leave and go to a bigger city was very, very disappointing. <laughs> and then here I am today uh, with the Rangers, and uh, what do you know? <laughs> We've got uh, Artem as part of our organization now, and I'm ecstatic. He's a, he's a great kid, plays the game hard, he plays the game the right way, he's as creative as they come. So this is, this is going to be a, a big part of our team trying to build into a championship team. Uh, he's all in. We're all in. This should be fun. J.D., uh, he's been incredibly durable during his career. How yeah. does that factor in with your own comfort level for going with term? It, that's a huge part of it. He's played four years in the, in the National Hockey League. Before that, he was playing over in Russia. Um, and they don't have the long, long schedules uh, like we do over here. So I, I, and I, don't, I, I think when you look at Artem and you think about injury history and touch wood, it's all good, so these things do play into it. He's a very well-conditioned, uh, very strong athlete, strong on the puck when you watch him play for a player that's 5'11", not 6'2", 6'3", uh, but very, very hard to take the puck away from. He can do his job taking the puck away from others. Um, a brilliant passer, a creative player, knows how to conserve energy on the ice, all these types of things. So I... I uh, I think we're very, very satisfied with that. I know, I know there's going to be some questions about, about the uh, build going on with the Rangers, and he's 27 years old, what happened? Well, we, we've got kids that belong to us that are 18 years old all the way up, and uh, I, I think, and so do we as a group, that, that Artem's going to be a player that uh, is just getting into his prime. So we, we think that he's got years and years left, and when these kids pop that are 18 and 19 years old right now, when they become 22, 23, 24, he's still going to be a very, very good player. So we're, we're excited about it. And, John, along those lines, you got to know not only Artemi Panarin, the player, but the person over these yeah. last three, four years. Yeah. In terms of him becoming a young and then more established veteran leader on this team, what can you tell us about him as a person that makes him the right fit for this city and this team? Yeah, a good person. Um, you know, you don't want people to be a part of your team that <clears throat> aren't going to be a positive part of the culture. That just doesn't work. Uh, he's a good person. He loves to win. He loves to score. He, um, he's got an infectious smile about the way he goes about his business. He can, like any other athlete, if it's not going well, get frustrated, and that's just human nature and natural. But uh, all in all, he works hard on the ice, works hard off the ice, uh, loves to move the puck and interact with teammates on the ice. All these types of things, these boxes all get checked with Artem. Um, I, I know in Columbus his, his girlfriend is also from across the ocean, and she was very involved with various charities that the Blue Jackets were involved with. So they, they get involved. They, they uh, like living life. And as he said, he, he had to make a decision where it's probably going to be either a seven-year decision with another team or eight years if he would have stayed in Columbus and that's a good chunk of one's life and he wanted to make sure that he wanted to go and play hard and where he wanted to live and uh, sure enough it's right here in the, in the, in New York with the Rangers JD I was um, <clears throat> I was wondering about Mika Zibanejad and how strong his season was last year as a number one centerman now and established does that help the decision for Panarin to want to come here to play with him? And it, does it also factor in with your decision-making, saying we've got a number one center here, and if we flank him with a top-scoring winger, what do we have here in New York? Well, it, it's certainly that's going to be up to the coaching staff with Quinny and the gang to figure out combinations. But I will say that when we did meet with Artem at Madison Square Garden a few days ago, um, he knew the lineup. He knew the team. 
and he also knew that we're going to be young and and uh, I, I think with the way he works and the play, he plays the game that when you when you have the Busnevich and uh, and uh, and Kratsov and others, um, they're going to be able to learn from this fella, learn the way he plays. Uh, he looks at the game through uh, through his eyes, and that that'll be creative for these young players to uh, to be able to learn from. And uh, it, those things are all pluses. But as far as the actual lineup goes, that's that's the coach. Do what you need to do and try to find combinations that work. John, since the end of the season, this franchise has added John Davidson, Jacob Truba, Adam Fox, and now Artemi Panarin. You talk a lot and are very quick to warn Rangers fans about the process and how this is still yeah. a process. Where is the process today well, was, compared to even a couple months ago? Was that four guys you mentioned? <laughs> yeah, those were the four. Well, three out of four is not bad. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Again, the, the the process is is one that you try to create a real good culture uh, from within the players themselves and how everything gels and works together. I think uh, before I got here, they were well on their way. They've made some good moves around here. Uh, keys are to 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 get picks, then make the most of your picks, and then along the way, as you're doing all that development, and this franchise has been blessed by ownership to do what you have to do, to go and uh, use your means, try to find ways to get development coaches and, and strength and conditioning coaches and on-ice coaches and off-ice coaches to try to develop the right way, and the quicker the better. Um, so I, I look at this group, and when you do that, you also have to be mindful of trying to find ways out there. There's got to be players. There's got to be ways of doing things. And uh, with Jeff, the, the Truba trade was, was something that was really good for this team. It's a perfect fit. Um, he's going to be a good player for us for a long time. And then you, then you think of the draft and what's gone on there, and you think of free agency. Now we've, we've been able to bring Panarin in. So I, I couldn't be happier. This is, I'd term, here we are July 1st, and I think this team's had a great offseason. And I'm going to be one, though, that has a full understanding of these things take time. This is, again, a very hard league to win in. And so I know you take steps forward, which are the most important things. You're going to take some back. But you, uh, as long as you keep moving forward more than backwards, you're, you're getting there. And that's what we're going to keep trying to do. John Davidson, thanks so much for joining okay. us. Thanks for your thoughts, and congratulations on thanks, July guys. 1st. Good talking with you. Thank you very much. And Steve, the Rangers no doubt hope, and Ranger fans expect that Panarin will put the puck in the net, but it's hardly the only element of his game. Oh, look, you're talking about one of the top five playmakers in the NHL over the last five years. Just look at last season. He's between Crosby and Kane, McDavid and Goudreau as one of the guys that passes the puck most frequently that lead to shots. Now, in the NHL, we're looking for scoring chances. These players are trying to buy goals, and there isn't a day on the schedule that's as frenetic as July 1st. But if you look at where he is at actually passing the puck on grade A opportunities, he's again third, right between McDavid and Kucherov. This is one of the best players in the league at this. I can't wait to see what happens to Zibanejad, who is a player that needs a pass. He's not one that's going to beat you one-on-one -on -one and do it alone. We saw him struggle without Zuccarello in the lineup and at times without Kreider. But if you give Zibanejad Panarin, and you have this, and you could have a rookie of the year in Kako. And you, I'm trying not to get too yeah, ahead, right, yeah. but it's exciting because it's an opportunity where these players are going to be put into positions to score from one of the best in the league over the last five years.